Howdy, yes. howdy, howdy. <laughs> Hello, my name is Diana Nguyen. I'm an actor, comedian, and I'm hosting today's episode of Couch Community Wellness for Your Wellbeing. Hashtag Love Your Reflection Edition. And before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land, the Kulin Nations, and pay our respects to the orders past, present, and emerging so that we continue to tell our story and um, and fill our hearts with love. And today we are talking about confidence. We are talking about making yourself empowered, wellness, making yourself beautiful, and also the chance to master the art of makeup. And I'm going to be really honest with everyone here. I pay for my makeup to be put on my face. Um, <laughs> I am not good at it. I'm not good at putting art on my face. I'm good at making art of laughter. So I'm so excited to introduce our guests on Couch Community today, today, talking about wellness, talking about her business and her journey. And when I met her yesterday at her business, it was so wonderful to find out that her journey didn't just start from this one dream. It was it was um, all these moments in her life that led her to her years. So please welcome Peter Gay to the hello, show. Hello, hello. It's great to be doing this with you, Diana. I love it. Thank you. And, you know, this is your bio, which is very impressive. You are the co-founder and visionary and principal makeup artist of Iridus Cosmetics, which I have here. This is one of your bestsellers. Yep. Yep, our BB cream. Look at that. Woo, woo. There you go. And you created and developed a unique Iridus business model, which we'll talk about in the show. You're also the leader and mentor of makeup artist educators. And someone actually just messaged me when they found out I was interviewing you because they've had they've had their clients work with you. Oh, which is cool. amazing in small world. Um, and the strategic driving force behind the brand and Iridus experience. So she's passionate all about things. She definitely is. You'll feel her vibrate through the video while we do this makeup tutorial. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you'll feel the confidence to how to apply makeup and how to use it in your daily life. So uh, uh, your also your nickname is PG as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yes. yeah, and parental guidance is recommended. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock. Yeah. I know. We're on best behaviour today, Diana. We are on best behaviour. And if you are watching, please put in the comments, please interact, please ask questions. We will be able to answer the questions live or we can come back during our Q&A to answer any questions I have a lot of questions to ask. So um, Peter Gay will go through the steps on how to apply makeup. So take it away. I'm so excited. Yay. Uh, it's so funny what you were saying about how you pay to get your makeup done. And so many of my clients do. I mean, you know, we, we are always doing makeup for events and photo shoots and all of that sort of stuff. But mm. Really, what exactly what you just said is why I set up my makeup brand to start with. So, you know, women, we just, you know, feel like this is um, assumed knowledge about makeup, that we are meant to know how to put it on because we're a woman and we wear makeup. But really, if you think about it, we've actually never been taught how to do it. And really, that was the driving force behind starting my own makeup brand and working with women on how to do their makeup. So um, the very fact that you just opened with that little confession, um, you're not alone. Um, so what is the journey? You were a lawyer. Yes. That's the journey. So how long were you doing law for to then be, be I, where we are? Um, so I was 17 years as a lawyer. And I was working in superannuation law, so like the second most boring era of law. Uh, and, you know, like every day was a bit of a struggle once I had come up with this idea of Iridus and, you know, teaching women makeup because 
that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to be this lawyer thing anymore. Uh, you know, it was it was all about wanting to, um, you know, transfer into being a makeup artist again because, you know, I started out being a makeup artist at uni. That was one of my uni jobs. Um, I worked at the body shop. And so this is like 1994 to 1998. Uh, and so that was like my first job. And then, you know, I, I went and became that lawyer and, you know, worked in super and worked my way up. Um, I, my last job was running a $90 million super fund. I was the fund executive officer of that fund. Um, and then I was side hustling with makeup um, on the weekends and after hours. So, yeah, it was it was great. And then eventually the uh, lawyer job was my, my side hustle. And then I transferred, um, you know, fully into doing makeup. And that was like the best day ever. That was like 2015. And can I ask, when did you, when was makeup part of your life? Because oh, like Everyone's forever, really? Yeah, yeah. I have um, two older sisters, and they're ten years older than me. And so, like, they were doing makeup in the eighties, and like, I, you know, I was, I was born in seventy five, and so by the time the eighties rolled around, I was like so into makeup, like it was just everything. Boy George was like my hero. His makeup still to this day. Oh my god, like amazing uh so that really formed me in terms of makeup and so I'd watch my sisters do it and that I was always just copying them and stealing their makeup and yeah that was just what I did so beautiful what a story I mean for me makeup came on really late I would say it was about when I was 21 22 yes and you've seen my kit because I had to send a photo <laughs> to PG um, with my kit and she was like oh it's very very simple <laughs> And, but you know what? Like this is the confession that women often make to me. They, you know, they send me photos of what they've got and I'm like, okay, great. We've got like some good basics that we can build on. So, you know, like it just, you're, it, you are such the typical woman. <laughs> and, the, and the great thing when we met yesterday before um, doing this live was that you've got this set up, don't you? You actually yes. kind of set this up for women to help them and it's really great. It's a chart, face chart. Um, yes. So this is what I'm following to make sure I don't lose my way, like a Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> well, we call this paint by numbers. Like you literally cannot get this wrong. So like what we did last night was to do a colour match, um, an advanced colour matching of you where I looked at your skin tone, your eye colour, your hair colour, any highlights you have, all of the things that I see in your face um, from a colour perspective. And then it's about matching your foundation correctly. So you saw that I matched to your chest rather yes. than, you know, to your face. So we tested to your chest to start with and then we put it on your face and we double check the colour. Um, you know, never test on the back of your hand or your wrist or, you know, like you've got to test where you wear it. And you want to have mm -hmm. your foundation and your chest the same colour. So that's why when people look at you the most amount of skin that's on show needs to match to your foundation so that's why a makeup artist will test to the chest and, and this is perfect segue into the next part is can you tell us what do we need for this tutorial for today right okay so when we're, like, so our whole premise of this is that you're going to look good in your PJs, right? Um, yes, restrictions have been lifted, but we're still, you know, sitting at home a lot more than we would ordinarily. Um, and, you know, I don't think uh, much is happening in terms of a lot of people going back to work straight away. So we're still going to be working from home. We're still going to be sitting in front of Zoom. We're still, you know, not doing all the things we would do. So the whole premise of this workshop today, this in the series, uh, was to get a bit of ISO glam for your PJs. So, um, you know, I, I, like, are, are you in your PJs, uh, Emma? Are you, you act, did you get dressed? Trackies. Trackies. I'm in trackies too. I mean, look, I think it's a win that we're actually wearing pants today. Let's face it. <laughs> so what we want to do is uh, start with some really good skin preparation. So we're going to start with skin. Then we're going to move into using um, a foundation or a BB cream. Oh, look, we match. Uh, BB cream is what we're going to go with because, look, if you're going to be, like, having a bit of face on for your, um, you know, like, ISO glam, you, a BB cream is a better option because it's not too heavy on your skin and it just, you know, it's like a lighter kind of coverage. And, look, when I saw your skin, I thought you have the most magnificent skin uh, that it was you don't need a lot of coverage. So you want to go as little coverage as possible. Um, 
to get that that cover. Now, Diana, you've gone, you're on mute. Is that right? Yes. Oh. I just want to make sure that I can hear you. Oh, fab. Okay. Oh, you're so good. All right. So we want to have a good moisturizer. We want to go in with a BB cream or a foundation. Um, a pressed powder is also what we're going to use to just set that. Um, so, yep, good. You're all prepared. I love it. We've got a couple of brushes that um, I'm going to use for that foundation and for the powder. Yes, you're set too. Uh, we're also going to do a bit of cheek magic. Uh, this is our blusher and contour palette. Um, and you should have, yes, that's your little customised palette and another uh, a blusher brush as well. Yes, bingo. Oh, you've got it all. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is uh, eyeliner, eyeliner and a mascara um, because, you know, like no look is complete without that, bingo. Um, and we may even get to doing a little bit of eyeshadow work um, with one colour uh, just to give us a little bit of, you know, zhuzh action. All righty. I'm excited. Okay. I ready? love it. Yes. Let's play, shall we? Radio. So obviously I'm fully made up because um, I wasn't going to do this with no makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what? This has been the cutest thing because I've been doing these like Skype lessons, Zoom lessons for people. Um, and sometimes, depending if we're doing like the whole shebang, I will come on like barefaced and then build the look literally on my face as we go. Um, yeah. And other times I'm doing it like I've done it with you where I'm already made up and then I'm just talking the person through the technique. So that's what we're going to do today. Okay, First up, amazing. Moisturize, <laughs> moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. I cannot yet. This is it. You'll have to pierce it because yours is brand new. So um, yep. this uh, embryo lease, mine's already open and, and been used. So just pierce uh, with the, the lid and pop that through. So uh, this is an amazing product and, and a bit of a makeup artist secret um, embryo lease. So this product, uh, we actually retail it. That's it. We actually retail this product, um, not a traditional iridus product, but it is something that makeup artists swear by. It's been a bit of a hidden secret in the industry. And so we love it. Goes on all skin types, made from all natural plant based ingredients. So it's and it non reactive. So it's going to really hydrate your skin. Now, I cannot stress this enough. We are in winter, girls. It is time to moisturize. So really, you just need like a pea size amount. I'm going to actually put some on the back of my hand because um, I, you know, could do with the hand, the moisturizer on my hand. So see, that it's it's a, a very small amount that you need because it is concentrated. Beautiful okay. French product. Oh, my God. It's so, oh, look, get into it. So you want to be popping this all over the skin, um, everywhere that you you uh, would be putting your uh foundation on down your yeah. neck even um you know you can use it on the chesticle area um you know this this needs you like you cannot use too much of this stuff basically and i'm using it on my hands because oh my god like after all the hand sanitizer the hand uh -huh. washing like this they actually the french market this is the the um 24 hour miracle cream right and it really can turn your skin around in a day and so on when you've got all the sore hands at the moment like i've got a bit of dermatitis um from all the hand sanitizer i mean that's yeah. been a makeup artist problem our whole lives mm -hmm. but um at the moment especially it's just intense so yeah great for hands as well this product so how does um, that feel on your skin it feels good yeah i feel yep. um what is it? The word right, right word clean. I feel, you know, good. clean, <laughs> moisturized. That's it. Um, can I ask if I got, I should? How many times should we moisturize a day? Whenever you cleanse, you want to be uh, moisturizing. So it's a really good question, actually. Morning and night is our standard thing. So when you're in the shower and you, you know, you wash your face um, and you come out and you feel a bit crunchy, right? Like that's a sign you need to moisturize. Um, at the end of the day, when you take your makeup off, you're cleansing again, you should be taking your makeup off, you want to then be moisturising again. And ideally at night you want to be using a night cream uh, for that so that it's really going to nourish your skin while you're regenerating, your skin regenerates as well. Okay. So yeah. moisturiser at the moment is, you know, our most important thing. This is uh, the thing for winter. Um, you can't get good makeup without having really good skin underneath. Um, and I find that most of my clients are dehydrated uh, mm -hmm. and I really need to amp them up with um, a facial oil, uh, a vitamin C serum, uh, eye creams, 
and this product. But like this is a great start to just getting your skin um, in better shape because winter dries us out like nothing else. It's oh, just you, you really can feel it on the skin. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, my, I watched my mum put moisturiser. Like my mum's a freak about Lancome for some yes. reason. The yes. Asians love their French cosmetics. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I made a joke, like, the reason why we look we look so young is because of Lancome. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it is actually, if you pull it all back, it is moisturiser. Start from the basic, right? Absolutely. And, you know, like, I, I turned 45 in August and you I... You look amazing. Have... You look amazing. It is the makeup. <laughs> Um, look, truly, it's looking after your skin, you know, like drinking water, not smoking, um, you know, staying out of the sun. I mean, they're all things that are going, yeah, totally, look, I'm prepared to. Um, you know, they're all the things that you need to be doing to keep your skin in tip-top condition. But, you know, like prevention is better than cure. So, you know, it, it really is that if you moisturise now, you'll reap the benefits later. Mm, okay. Mm. Love it. Are you ready for the next step? Yes. <laughs> we need to get your glow on. So the this is our BB cream. Now, um, they they came out in like probably, uh, it's probably been nearly 10 years, I reckon, that BB creams have sort of had a resurgence. So back in the day, right, we used to call these tinted moisturisers. And so mm -hmm. BB cream stands for beauty balm, okay, and it's designed to be a kind of moisturiser, primer, foundation, all in one, okay. Um, we aren't fans of doing the that all in one kind of like makeup artist as if we ever do just one product, right. Um, so what would be great um, is, I mean, this you can use it like that, right? But you're not going to get longevity. You're not going to get that same flawless kind of look. Um, but these are designed to be quick applications, right? And they're also designed to be, like, not too heavy. So it's all about having something a bit more sheer, a bit more natural. And, you know, when you're at home um, in front of Zoom, you want to have your complexion evened out, but you don't want to be having too cakiness, right? Like, you know, if you're in your PJs, you don't want to be fully, fully made up. Although yes. I like I. I always am. Now, of oh, course, the most important thing before this, though. Oh, sorry, we can ask something. Yeah, can I ask about the caking, right? Uh, like, yes, yes. Um, it's because I, when because I'm an actor, and oh. especially for TV, we need a lot of makeup. How do you? And you know, the great thing it says behind your cream is BB cream age defines and anti age. Of course, people are going to get it. <laughs> um, <laughs> As, a, as an actor, uh, do you, is it diff two different types of makeup uh, for like a casual day and an, an artist? Um, oh, that is such a good question. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I do TV makeup as well. Uh, one of my last ones was looking after Sophie Monk on The Bachelorette uh, for all of her Melbourne um, episodes. Yeah, that was fun. She's Amazing. Like just Oh, my God, she is so awesome. Seriously, that woman, like, that was, like, it's, it's, it, you feel weird taking money for having such a fun time with someone. Um, like, but, of course, no, pay me, pay me. Uh, so uh, makeup for television is absolutely a very specific art form. Um, you yeah. you actually can't use anything with shimmer or um, gloss on television because it absolutely translates weirdly on camera and ends up looking really oily, right? So, yeah. um or you're nodding. Oh, has this happened to you? <laughs> yes. So yes. shine is like, you know, the worst thing in the world for television. So uh, no highlighting. And, I mean, there's this, like, trend at the moment where they, they highlight down the end of the nose with, like, this, like, vibrant moon-like shimmer. Um, mm -hmm. Like, good makeup artists don't, don't do that. It's not a thing, right? And if I did that on television, it would just look like a bloody mirror ball, right? So television makeup does need to be heavier because of the lighting. Um, it does need to be made of specific ingredients that aren't going to strobe um, or like reflect weirdly under the lights and on the camera. Um, and these are things that, you know, like you only really know when you are a TV makeup artist because, you know, you don't get called back again if you stuff it up, uh, yeah. you know. So so it's it's one of those things you've got to get right. So, yes, a BB cream is great for a, sort of an everyday look. But when we're talking about 
TV, when we're talking about going out at night and you need a little bit more coverage, you're going to need a foundation to do that. Right. And good just question. Reminder, thank you. If, and just a reminder to our audience, if you're watching in and you want more um, tips or questions specifically for, for yourself, just place in the comments and we're happy to answer them. So just remind you, you this is an interactive tutorial. You're going to watch me put makeup onto my face. So yes. I'll be asking questions. All right. So back oh, to cool. the print. Right, so um, BB cream, before we do that, uh, we're going to go in with the foundation primer serum. Um, you've got that one there too, the glass bottle. Yes, this is uh, literally our best selling product. This one is such a winner. So, the foundation primer, have, have you been using a primer now? Like, you know, before, before today, Diana, have you been using a primer? No, <laughs> this, is my, this is my first primer. This is going to change your life. This was my whole makeup kit, everyone. I had my whole life in here. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Look, it's called Minimalist. It's good. Okay. Uh, so this this product, um, you're, what you're going to do is you're going to squirt a couple of pumps out on your hands. Um, yeah. I'm going to say three, three squirts of this, uh, and then you're going to rub it all over your face like it, like you did with that moisturiser. Now, while you do that, I'll talk through why it's amazing and why you need a primer. Now, um, primers are designed to not be absorbed into the skin. So this is going to sit on top of your skin. Uh, oh, it's made good. Do you know what? You can actually see a difference with it before, like, just putting it on. Like, you, it will smooth out your skin. So a good primer is designed. I, I, can you feel that? Yeah, like my skin was like sandpaper before, but now it's like, oh, it's like this gel. It's really nice gel. It's like velvety, isn't it? Ooh, yes. Mm. Mm. I love it. Uh, <laughs> yay. This is why it's a bestseller. Women buy two of these at once because they're like, I can't be without this. Like truly this happens. So what a good primer is going to do and what our primer does, it's a silicon base so it isn't designed to rub in, okay? So it, it literally is designed to sit on top of your skin. Uh, it's also going to, look, 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 you look more flawless already. Like it smooths out lines, wrinkles, not that you've got any because, you know, you just look amazing. Uh, but if you do worry about lines and wrinkles, it smooths them all out. Um, it will create a beautiful flawlessness for your skin to sit on top of. Ours is also enriched with vitamins so uh, and grapeseed extract. So you're going to get nourishment. That's why we call it a serum. Uh, and then on top of that, the best thing of all is it makes your foundation or your BB cream last all day long. Ooh. So, so many of my clients are like, I put my makeup on and then it's worn off at lunchtime. And has it ever happened to you? You've put makeup on, it's just gone? Yes, the blush goes, my lippy. You don't put the primer on your lips, do you? Uh, you can actually use the eye primer that we're going to use in the last series on your lips for that, but not for today. But, yeah, that's that's the one. That's um, eye and a lip primer. But, look, lippy you have to replenish, right? When you eat, you talk, all of that, that that has to get replenished unless you've got one of those liquid lip thingos on. Um, but they kind of dry your lips. I'm not a fan. But when, you know, your foundation, you don't, you want to put that on once. You don't want to have to keep touching it up, yeah, like crazy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So your, a good primer is going to keep your makeup on all day long. So yeah. now we're going to go in. So you put that primer on, all smoothed on. Now we're going to move into the BB cream. Whoop, whoop. Um, so what you want to do is get your buffing brush, which is um, this is our best-selling uh, foundation or well, brush in general. Um, and this brush is designed to kind of be like an airbrush kind of effect on your skin. Um, so what you want to be doing is this kind of circular motion, right, with it. And also, also you want to splay the bristles. So you want to use quite a bit of pressure like that. Because these bristles are actually um, duo fibre, like they're two two layers. So see how they've got like black ones and then they've got the white ones. So yes. yeah, that's it. That's how you want to do it. Perfect. So the way these work and why these type of, of foundation brushes are so good in putting your makeup on um, is that it buffs it into your skin like an airbrush effect. So then you end up really natural. It's like sheer. It doesn't look cakey um, and it doesn't sort of settle in any lines or it blemishes or pores, that sort of thing. So um, what you want to do is you want to squirt a couple of squirts, probably about um, two to start with, onto your oh, brush. Onto the brush. Yep, onto the brush. 
Okay. That's it. Beautiful. And then you want to um, dab that around your face so that you evenly distribute. Yeah, perfect. Look at you go. Winter. Woo -woo. It's on my face right now. It's cold. <laughs> And then you can start your buffing motion. So it is this kind of put a bit of pressure on, like more pressure than that. You want to splay those bristles. Yes. And then it really is literally just about moving that around your face um, evenly and probably a little bit more pressure than that, I think. Oh, uh, yes. really? Yeah. Yeah, more pressure than you think with these brushes because you want to get into these um, the, the black-haired bristles. You want to be uh, not just working at the the top level of those white bristles because that's the magic of this brush right is that the two push together and then it's super fast to get your face on and it's getting right into the pores it's getting right into any lines and it just creates a really flawless finish like mm. look at you already mm. are you going out after this i know i'm doing a lot of admin but i'm gonna look hot <laughs> well, like this is the thing right like makeup's for us it's not actually for other people um yeah. you know like pe people are always saying oh you know i'm not going to bother putting my face on because i'm just at home it's like i want to look amazing at home i've got another mirror so i can very good yeah and then oh, blend yeah. it down your neck a bit like so sort of down this kind of I don't want to do too much blending here on myself because I've got a contour on and I cannot shift that contour. Can I can I can you explain to me again why yesterday you didn't test on my face but on my collarbone just for anyone who's just joined us? Absolutely. So makeup artists um, will always test to the chest. And the reason for that is that we want to have your foundation on your face match this colour here. So if your face is actually darker than your chest, and, some, and in some cases that's true, then you want to even it out so that when people are looking at you, they you're all one colour. It's not like you've got a mask of colour on. Um, and we were always taught, I mean, do you remember you were taught to put it on your wrist or put it on the back of your hand? But, I mean, look at the difference in terms of colour on me. Like, you know, I, I that if I put that colour on my face, it would be the wrong colour. Oh, mm. look at you. See the glowiness already? Like you've got that glow. And, and this I have is to, good. Oh, no, yeah, say. No, I have to say it feels really great. The brush even on the face and... um knowing that there's three layers like you know we've we've put on the moisturizer we put on the primer we put on the bb um cream it feels good yeah yeah it's crazy right like you feel like you got all this stuff on but it doesn't feel like that at all on your skin mm. Oh, mm. see the glow. So see how there's like this little sheen as you as you turned then? That's what we want, right? Like mm -hmm. when you're over 35, it's all about the glow, okay? So um, it definitely, you know, you want something with a bit of glow in it. You know, matte foundations, they're not really on anymore. Now, we've just had a question about yes. primer having super dry skin. Is a primer good for your skin type? Um, yes. Now, absolutely Steph it is essential that you use a primer for dry skin because if you just go if you just moisturize and then go in with your foundation it's going to grab on your skin it's going to have um like a scaly kind of effect and the primer will act as a barrier between your skin and that foundation so it's going to create that beautiful flawlessness for you that your then your foundation sits on top of and that is definitely going to help with your dryness um Great. and oh where can you That's buy it oh steph it's like she knows uh, iridus.com.au you buy it through us uh, we're on Facebook we're on Instagram uh, and on online obviously so yeah I-R-I-D-I-S we're in Yarraville so you can even make an appointment to pop in be colour matched etc now that we're open again woohoo and another question we've got from Laura is is it okay to apply makeup with your fingers instead of a brush Ah, Laura, good question. Now, look, on the days where I'm, like, super, super in a hurry, I might, like, whack on 
my foundation with my fingers. Like, you know, I, I definitely have done that in the past. Um, one thing I've noticed is that it doesn't last as long on your skin when you use your fingers versus a brush. Uh, and that's because the heat of your fingers is enough to actually melt that product before you even get it on your face. So what we say as makeup artists is use a brush for that because it's you're going to get longevity with your makeup. The other thing with it, um, with a brush, is that you're going to use a way, way, way less amount of product. So, um, as you saw with uh, putting it on with your, with your, with your, if you used your fingers, we only put two squirts of that um, BB cream on to do like Diana's whole face, right? If you used your fingers to do that, you would put one squirt here, one squirt there, a third squirt, and then probably even a fourth for your nose and your chin. So I find that I tend to use way more product when um, I'm putting it on with my fingers and you don't get it as sheer. So if you're wow. wanting a heavier coverage, fingers can work, but again, it's going to break that product down. You won't get that longevity. That is good such question. a good point. It means you're saving money when you're squirting less exactly and i say to people look you're buying the brush right so like that's gonna you know that, that costs but you're gonna save on your foundation so that's a good thing i love it the asian me is coming out right now <laughs> <laughs> i love that so now that we've got those three steps we've moisturized we've primed and now we've added the um, bb cream foundation we're now going to set our uh, set our makeup now this is a step that some women are a bit funny about because they're like i don't like powder it settles in lines it makes me look older all of that but the thing is when you get the right powder it's not going to do that and it's really important to set your foundation because it gives you the longevity it's, it makes it last all day long uh makeup artists call this whatever's wet needs to get set that's like these little mnemonics that we have it's good, isn't it? I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we want our powder brush and we want our pressed powder. Give that a bit of a press. They're a bit sticky at the start. This this little press that. Hang on, where are we? Press that. Yeah, you got it. Beautiful. Um, so this is our translucent powder. So it's the, the no powder powder that we call it. And we call it that because it is like you're not even wearing a powder. It's that sheer. Yeah, look at how invisible that is, right? like super, super fine to put on. And that's what makes it great for any woman that's like, I don't want to wear powder because it is like you aren't even wearing one, right? Now, the technique. Do you remember back in the day, we would have been taught to do our powder like, you know, like totally, right? Yeah. Right. We need to change yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know. See, it's like I've seen this before or something. So what we want to do is we want to just gently dot um, our brush in and you don't need heaps, right? Like hardly anything on the brush. And then what we want to do is we want to press, press into the skin. So it's just like this dotting motion. See how I'm just dotting it? Yeah, that's it. And you can add a bit more powder and then go again. But you don't need a lot, okay? Like this pressing motion. And you can mm. see like I've already got makeup, you know, foundation, powder, and now I've just put another layer of powder on. You can mm. not tell. Like, how amazing is that? Sh the sheerness of this. So, mm. yeah, that's perfect technique. Diana, look at you go. It's my only facial massage I'm giving right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Isn't it? I know. Like, the nice, soft brushes. It's like, yeah. oh. It's like, how much? Mm -hmm. like, I, I miss a facial. I miss a massage. Like, oh, I can't wait to have them again. Yeah, um, and it just reminds me of, like, women who go to the balls and they go, oh, I'm getting ready to go. <laughs> um, I need a ball. I need a ball. Yes, COVID-19, we need a ball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we've got Julia asking a question. How frequently mm -hmm. should you be washing your makeup brushes? Oh, that is a really good question. Like at the moment, like there's all this talk in makeup land about how essential it is that you, you know, what deep cleaning your makeup brushes, we're using 70% uh, alcohol to sanitize them. Like we are going all out in makeup. We've always been a bit, you know, anal retentive about our brushes and that process of deep cleaning and using the 70% alcohol. That's just our standard practice. Um, but, you know, at the moment, everyone is onto it. Now, obviously for, um, 
makeup artist use, that's what we do. That's our process. We really look after the quality and, and cleanliness. When it comes to you at home, what we say is that you want to be washing your brush, um, you know, probably weekly, fortnightly, monthly. Uh, what I find, though, is that most women just don't. <laughs> it just seems like way too much effort. Um, so what is out there is a thing called a brush cleaner. And you want to find one that's got a high alcohol content so that it is going to be getting all the bacteria off and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, you if you're putting bacteria back on your skin, you are going to be causing breakouts. You are going to be causing potential for um, eye infections. You know, you, if you, you definitely don't want to be sharing brushes with anyone. Like, you know, that, that sort of stuff is, is especially at the moment, um, you know, that they are really basic, basic things. But mm. every now and again, and I think what's probably achievable for the anal retentive types is like fortnightly, probably for everyone else, it's probably one to two months, but like that is pushing it on your brush. Like you're going to get like a lot of product build up on this. Um, but really what you want to be doing is um, washing them with some uh, soap. And what works really well is like Sard Wonder Soap. Uh, that's going to break down the foundation that's on here because like these products today, you're usually silicon-based um, products and that holds on well to the skin, right? But it also holds on well to the brush. Nah. So it's absolutely essential to give that the big biggest clean. So what you want to do is you want to dip um, your your bristles into water, right? Like so, just just to the um, end of the metal part of your your brush. So it's really important that you never ever ever get water down this part of the. Um, of the brush because if you do that it's going to get in there destroy the glue and then all oh, your bristles are going to come out have just had a little hiccup oh did you just have you just frozen all good i'll keep talking i can talk underwater it's fine oh you're back look at that uh, so with your um, bristles, what you really want to be doing is um, wetting them with the water and then what you want to be doing is getting some shampoo or Sard Wonder Soap is your best bet and swirling that um, dirty brush around in that. Testing, um... one, two, three. Oh, I can see you. You're back. Can you see us? Oh, hang on. It's all right. She's, um, look, Diana's having difficulties, but I'm just going to keep on going. So uh, what you want to be doing is making sure that with that uh, Sard Wonder Soap, you swirl around like that. And then all that um, foundation is going to start coming off uh, your brush. And, and, and as it comes off, you want to squeeze it out. And then you want to keep rinsing. But like I said, oh, she's back. Yay. Uh, a little, um, brushes. Yes, washing the brushes. Uh, so you want to rinse it, but only ever let the water run down this part of the brush. And then you really want to be rinsing and rinsing and rinsing until this part goes um, like white again. Yes, exactly. And then you want to keep swirling it around um, in your hand uh, with that soap on there. Rinse it out. Then, right, you get all the excess water out, grab a bit of, um, you know, a towel or paper towel and really just take that excess water out, give it a lot of pressure. And then you want to hang it over a table so that it is um, this part of your brush is hanging over the edge of the table or a bench and then that's going to air dry. And then overnight that will air dry and then you're good to go again. So um, fortnightly is, is probably best practice. Monthly is probably what you'll end up doing. Amazing. Great to know to hang your brushes over the edge. Yep, yep, your wet right. brushes. The other thing you can do is like if you've got in your bathroom, um, putting it in the window where sun will hit it because sun, of course, is an amazing uh, antibacterial, uh, natural antibacterial, and so that will uh, just take any yuckies off as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm just admiring the before and after. Like this is probably 10 minutes after putting on the three products, four products. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's a massive difference from when I started the show. It's cool, isn't it? I'm so glad you can see that. I can see that too. It looks beautiful on you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now on to yeah. cheeks. Ooh. Do, 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 do. Honestly, cheeks. You know, blusher is, I feel like this is something that women get scared about, right? Like, do you feel a bit scared about blusher? Ah, uh, so the, uh, my makeup regime for my cheeks is purely bl bl blush. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Um, and how do you put it on? Yes. Pardon? Show me what you do to put it on. Are you serious? 
<laughs> I just because well, I because you've seen my apple cheeks. I've got apple cheeks. Um, so like I know that it's a feature, so I kind of make it rosy as much as I can. So it is pretty much just going for it. Yeah. And you looked at my photos in the twenties when I was in uni. And no idea. I was like a doll. Like it wasn't <laughs> a cute baby doll. It was like a doll. Like had come out of the plastic machine. <laughs> and <it was> like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I feel like blush is one of those things that scares the hell out of women that lived through the 80s, right? Like I feel like blush just ruined everyone in the 80s. So mm. um, what we what we say now is, I mean, these are our blushes. Um, you've got your, your pinky tones, you've got your more brownie kind of tones, and then down here are our contour, um, highlighter and contour that we're going to use. Now, look, there, it's a bit of a technique, okay, contouring and highlighting. Um, and, and blush. They're all, you know, part of the one um, kind of, you know, area on your face. Blush is a really unsung hero because it makes you look awake. It makes you look healthy. So it's something we don't want to skip. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, I put together a little custom palette for you there um, to use with your cheeks and your eyes. So we've got a highlighter, we've got a contour, and then I've got two different blushes for her. Um, Let's go in with the blush called Orgasmic, which is that peachy coloured one. Um, here it's this one here. Yaha, the peachy one. Now, this is amazing on um, Asian skin tones, like the often that have that more warmth um, in it. And as you said, your cheekbones are your major feature, and they are. You have, like, killer cheekbones, killer lips. So whenever you've got a really good feature, and a lot of women don't even know what their really good feature is, and I tell them, and they're like, hang on, what? I've got good cheekbones. It's like they don't even know. And so it's one of my favourite games to play is what, going around the table, telling everyone what their, like, best feature is, and it spins them out. They're like, I had no idea I had good eyebrows. It's great. It's fun. Now, what we want to do with our blush is you want it to sit in the middle part of your face, okay? You want to line it up with the um, under part of your eye, so, like, the mid part of where the iris is on your eye. Start mm. at the apples and then fill just that little gap. And it literally is this kind of J shape. Yeah, beautiful Ooh. technique. Um, so, you can have a, a bit more there too. Put a bit more product on your brush. Okay. And why do people do this? Like I said it on YouTube, they go like that. Why do they do that for? <laughs> this is so entertaining, like having you go, okay, I've seen all these things and what do they do? Like you are the best. So the reason um, a makeup artist will tap the brush, it's so the excess falls off so that then you don't end up with too much on your face. That's now, enough. this is important when it comes to eyes to tap off. Um, <laughs> cheeks a little less so because, like, when you put it on your eyes, it can fall down here, right? Whereas when you put it on the cheeks, it's not going to fall anywhere. So you're fine to, you know, you, so you don't really have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So this literally is about just popping that colour through the middle part of your cheeks. Um, so look at the sheen. Oh, my God. <gasps> do, 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 do. Can you see how amazing that looks? Great. I want to be hot for my admin work for today. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any pets at home? No, I've got people. Oh, you haven't even <laughs> got like a cat to appreciate your highlight. I've got housemates. <laughs> they should appreciate it. Yeah, they're probably watching now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So that, and now do the other side so you're even. Now, if you wanted a little more colour, right, like so you've got sheen here, which is amazing, and that that peach, you know, it's called orgasmic, right? It definitely does give you a little bit of colour. But if you're wanting a bit more colour, you can add that other one in, which is called Daydreams, which is that pinky mm -hmm. one, yep, and just you can just pop that straight over the top to just build your colour. So say you just wanted a little bit more colour, you can do that. So this kind of like buffing motion, this swirling motion, this J shape, that's how you want to be putting blush. You don't want to have it too close to the eye area, the socket, especially if you're over 35, 40, because, you know, you will end up with like colour there. Like we don't want that. We want colour on our cheeks. Oh, the angels are singing. Look at this. Yes, yeah, sister. Love. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
How does that, do you, do you like the look of it? I do. Well, I feel very shiny. Well, you've got the sheen, yeah. And also my ring light is like directly shining the moon on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We want that. Um, right. So so that blush that I gave you, that um, orgasmic one, is all about creating sheen and shine. Like it is a really sheeny, shiny blush. It's yeah. definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely designed to give you that glow. And the glow is in. Like we want to have that fresh, dewy, fabulous. Yeah, love it. Okay, now, uh, we don't need highlighter because we would ordinarily put that on. If you want to use a little bit, you could do a little bit, like just do a little bit on the side of your brush and it just goes on the top part of your cheeks. We don't really need it because the orgasmic, yeah, that's that white one. Yeah, that's it. Because orgasmic is already pretty sheeny, but just mm -hmm. like if you didn't have a sheeny, shiny blush, Go in yes. with your um, go in with your highlighter, and then that yeah. will just give it a nice little pop. Now, um, in your twenties, you can get away with having a little bit of glitter in your um highlighter. When you're over thirty five, you want to have shimmer, not glitter, because it just ages you, and it is not the eighties, no matter how much we want it to be. Look, look, if, uh, since I put the blush on, I feel like I feel like dancing. <laughs> <laughs> blush does that like to me as well. I'm ready to go, people. I'm ready to get out of town. <laughs> and you know what? Like this is literally all your face could need to be, right? Like that bit of mascara, your brows are pretty good anyway. Like, you know, I know you pencil them in like I do. But really, like this is a super quick look. You could do this to get into going grocery shopping. You could, you know, pick the kids up, drop the kids off. You know, all mm -hmm. of that. That This is what this look is designed to be, to just be a really quick look that you can put together and, and just give yourself a little bit of glow and feeling a little bit like, you know, you've you've pulled something together today you know yeah and just a reminder for anyone's joining please ask any questions while we're on live this is to help you while we do this tutorial on my face so please leave a comment and just a refresher for everyone we've applied the moisturizer we've applied the primer we've applied the bb cream and we've applied the powder and the last bit we did was the blush the orgasmic and the What's Highlighter. that? Highlighter. 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 You're doing so well. Look at you from like makeup novice to confessions of I have no makeup. I don't, you know, really do this very well. Look at you, Miss Glow. It's fabulous. I'm an, I'm an eager learner. <laughs> You're doing so well. Get yeah, me uh, a husband. So husband. That's what I'm doing this for. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Like that's totally like and yet you're going to be you know, doing admin this afternoon. I mean, how committed are you to this? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> so brows, okay, let's talk about brows. Absolutely essential for a makeup look to be having good brow action, okay? Now, as I said, um, we, we had a little brow. bit of, we, yeah, which is great. Bushy brows are in, right? Like the bigger brow was in. Um and you could very easily, like, skip brows. Like, you wouldn't have to really do brows with yours. Um, do you want to do brows today? Like, you know, if like like me, I actually have to draw mine on every day. Like, these yeah. these babies, believe it or not, are not how they look when I roll out of bed. Wow. <laughs> they look natural, though, don't they? It's good. But, yeah, yeah. it's just they're, they're non-existent. I had a 1990s brow plucking incident. We bonded over that, in fact, Diana, because, you know, I know you had a similar experience. <laughs> yes. Britney Spears was my experience. <laughs> and like this is literally anyone that lived through the 90s we had the coolest brows we were really in and now we're regretting everything truly we are um, yeah, so yeah. you've got a brow pencil there from um another brand if you wanted to whack it on i, I believe it's an hourglass um brow pencil is that right yeah 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 so like just you know give yourselves a little like you, you know go through with a little bit of brow action now in terms of filling in brows what we want to be doing is filling in the hair that is already there 
But also don't feel like you have to be bound by that because um, like what I do with mine is there's a, a fair bit of like skin involved in my brows that I pencil in with our um, beautiful waxy based um, eyebrow pencil. And uh, what is great about that eyebrow pencil is and a good brow pencil and the hourglass one will do that. Like look, like look already, she's got it done. You might need to draw on skin to just create the shape. So don't feel like you have to follow just the hair that's there um another really great thing is using the spoolie on the other end of the brush um to to or the, or the brow pencil that's it to just brush it up and really give it a good shape um we we're actually just uh, out of stock of some of our favorite brow pencils um and because this whole COVID thing we haven't been able to get as much stock in and so that's why she's using another brand but ours is exactly um the same and you would get that same effect with it because as you can see on myself okay fab now <laughs> I love, like, look at that. It, like, you wouldn't even need, like, mascara or eyeliner. But, like, well, you, you know. <laughs> you weren't going to see my eyes and I smiled. Like, you need a. <laughs> well, that's why I end up sticking false lashes on every day because it just gives me that real definition, you know. Um, so, so what we want to do is take the um, the pencil, the ninja. Uh, this is, um, before oh, we yeah. go on to, uh, before we talk about eyeliner, um, Someone's asked, Laura's asked, how do you feel about brow tattooing? Okay. Now, I love the idea of brow tattooing, microblading, um, you know, all these am amazing things, feathering of brows. Um, what gets me scared is that, like, if they stuff it up, you're going to have eyebrows on your forehead, right? And it's a tattoo. So, like, Ooh. I pencil the crap out of my brows. I'm incredibly, you know, vain. And I like a full makeup look. And yet I haven't gotten the brow to tattoo because I'm actually terrified that they're going to stuff it up. And I'm so particular on my brows. And they're, like, really uneven. So if you... I've seen good results, but they're from the people that are really expensive and um, and take ages to get into. But if you're going to do it, do that. Save up and get a good one. Don't go somewhere cheap. Um, the other thing is they're not permanent because they do wear off. Um, and sometimes if they use uh, crappy ink, they wear off to a green or a blue colour. And then that's kind of alien brows and it's not good for anyone. So no, that's how no. I feel about eyebrow tattooing. I haven't done it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being honest about it. It's always good to know the options. It's, yes. um, yeah, so, yeah, question yes. everything. It's knowing that tattoo is a permanent, um, it's a cosmetic permanent pa paint you put on your face, tattooing. Yes, so just and they actually, <laughs> like, they cut cut your skin to do it too. So, it like, it, it's kind of, it, it just kind of scares the hell out of me like I get a bit like scared about waxing sometimes and so then you know like the thought of having a tattoo on my eyebrows I don't know it's like but but also for me it would be because I'm a bit OCD that if she yeah. stuffed it up um and it was wonky I don't know that I would be able to cope with wonky brows. So <laughs> it, it might be fine for you. Uh, all I would say is do your research and make sure that the person that is actually doing the service, you see actual examples of their work. So often at a, yeah. um, you know, on, on Instagram or whatever, they ha look like they are talking a great talk and everything looks amazing, but then they obviously aren't going to be putting the dodgy ones up. So you want to make sure that the person that is actually doing your tattooing is the photos that you're seeing on Instagram or in their portfolio um, and research the hell out of it. <laughs> research the hell. Okay, let's move on to eyeliner mascara. Yes. Now, like even when we're at home um, and especially for Zoom, you want to be having some definition on your eyes because like Diana just said, you smile, you know, for Asians, you smile and they disappeared, right? Like, you know, she might have these like a killer cheekbones that women pay thousands to get, you know, injectables to achieve. Um, but for Diana, she feels like she's got the small eyes. Like I don't see that, but, you know, like we all have our things, right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is define the eye. So with um, a really good uh, eyeliner, this is our waterproof eyeliner and see how black that is. Like it is black, black, black um, and super creamy. Like that's not dragging on the skin. You want to have something that's not going to start dragging. Okay. So the trick with eyeliner is you want to get as close as you can to that lash line and draw. And I always do little like feathery motions like this so that, you know, you're not, you're not having to, don't feel like you have to do one whole like 
you know, sweep in 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 emotion. It literally yeah. is like these little tiny dit, 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 dits. Um, and so you you've worn eyeliner before, yeah? Oh yeah, it's never been correct. I had my girlfriend correct me and saying, "Dude, spend a bit more time on your eyeliner." <laughs> that was everyone's uh, a critic. Yeah, everyone, even my friends. So I was gonna put eyeliner on this webcam, and I thought that's gonna look weird. I'm just gonna have my mirror on. So just give me a second. <laughs> Go for it. I love it. Um, and if so, you have yeah. any other questions, if you have any other questions, please ask. And um, yeah, we're, we're working. Okay. We're working. I'm here. Use me as a resource. If there's anything that you've ever been thinking about with uh, makeup, now is the time. So while Diana gets in super close to that lash line, and look, I've already got like liquid eyeliner on today. Like this is a so I've got my wings going on. Um, but what uh, she's going to be using is the pencil eyeliner, um, just because it's a little easier to look uh, to get on evenly and if you do end up getting a little wonky you know something doesn't go right um you know what just smudge it out before it sets that's a little trick that we use um and suddenly you have a little smoky eye action set before it sets oh yeah so it's waterproof so it sets (laughs) (laughs) okay this is gonna be interesting are you concentrating diana yes now, one of the things that we always talk about with Makeup at Iridus is how it makes you feel because, you know, part of what we do and, and in fact, what our whole business is about is about reminding women about the thing that makes them most beautiful. We are all about um, teaching women to be more positive about themselves because, you know, a lot of the times we're really bloody critical of ourselves and that's what I want to change in the world. Oh, yeah, look at that and a good eyeliner. Seriously. Oh, look at her. Wow. This is fantastic. I love it when she snorts. That is the best bit. <laughs> All right. How, what do you think? I'm ready. Uh, yeah, I, I think your friend was mean. I actually think you've done a bloody good job of that. I'll send you the photo. You'll be like, what was she do? Yeah. <laughs> Get her to talk to me. That is not okay. Um, yes. Now, of course, we want to finish off with mascara. Okay, so um, I've this is our uh, lash tacular mascara. It's got a nice curved wand. See that uh, comes in waterproof and normal, and it, and it gives you lift and it gives you um, a really beautiful uh, lengthening effect on your lashes as well. So mascara is a bit of a you know a necessary, and even if you're not going to be bothered with cheeks or eyes or anything like that you know mascara your brows the you know the the evening your skin tone that's your look it doesn't have to be you know a massive look every day so um the the most important thing that i found with women you know we do tend to be critical and what i love seeing is when women can find something oh look at that find something about them that is makes them the most beautiful and sometimes that's hard to see so at iridus we uh, are always happy to share that with um our clients oh look at the oh i'm loving that smile um and so like i wanted to say to you girls like if you are feeling a bit drab or feeling that you're not beautiful and i mean we live in a world that is always constantly telling us we're not pretty enough um which is like a lie uh we all have something that makes us beautiful please message me with a selfie and i will wax lyrical about what makes you gorgeous um pump up those tires girlfriends um so yeah and and like do you a little face chart chart like this that you can literally follow um you know one step at a time in the order of putting it so it sort of starts at skincare and finishes at lips um speaking Mm. of lips bit of lip balm to really just create that um finished look for you my darling Oh, look at that. Um, she Diana's quite into statement lips, but for this look, you know, I so glam with your PJs. It is just about, um, you know, a little bit of lip balm, a little bit of action. Look, you are desperate to put that hot pink on, aren't you? Go for it. Do it. Do it. If this is going to make you feel better, put that lipstick on. But is that lip balm, though? <laughs> no, it's not. It is lipstick. Do you want to put it on? You can. Like, you know, wh- why shouldn't we wear a statement lip, right? Yeah. Lip, okay, all right. But so I also got that's that's lip primer, isn't it? Uh, eye primer, eye and lip primer. So um, we use it more for eyes, eyeshadow, and we're going to be doing that in the third series of this. Uh, yeah. But the um, but it, it it is more about that the the eyes than it is for lips. But oh, she's going to do it. 
<laughs> oh, why not? Um, so I challenge you today after watching this to find the thing that makes you most beautiful and then we want to focus on that. And so for Diana, like she's got exceptional skin, number one. Number two, she's got these killer cheekbones. Um, a lot of women that do have those really naturally awesome cheekbones, I mean I draw mine on every day, but if you are blessed with natural cheekbones, you actually think you have fat cheeks. You don't have fat cheeks. You just have beautiful cheekbones. And she also has killer lips. So for me, those are the features that I'd play up on her, which is why I gave her those um, dewy and, and glowy cheeks. Look, look at that. So cheekbones, um, skin and lips is, is Diana's uh, thing that makes her most beautiful. So what I tend to do is say, look at your amazing insert the best feature that you have so for me I love my hair that is like something that's a big thing for me um I love my eyes I really you know think I've got great eyes and I do like my lips as well so you know it's all about finding the thing and so I look in the mirror and I go look at your fantastic hair PG and and you know these are the things you do actually have to say to yourself because if you're not saying it to yourself no one else will either that's not, that's that's beautiful to hear because you can't like you you want to have the full package but if you just love your apple cheeks because they remind you of apples um, and, you know, for a really long time I didn't like my mouth because when I smiled uh, and because when I was really, really happy, I would show my gums. Mm, yes, yes, I yes. I smile like this. Oh. Yeah, it was, it's been a really long time. It's, you know, I've, I've grown in confidence and that's, and I've grown to love my gums because that's who I am. But um, yes. it needs practice. And I, I find, like, by doing this makeup tutorial with you, I've been practicing, <laughs> practicing my my um, my my worth. Like, who am yes. I? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's great that you talk about celebrate your features that yeah. are part of you. That's exactly um, it. I've got a question here for Laura. Any tips to keep the lips hydrated? Mm. Oh, yes, that is a really good question, particularly with winter, you know, and we never drink enough water in winter. So really important to keep the lips hydrated. Uh, one of the things that I find, if you get an old toothbrush, you can um, use it with a little bit of water or a little bit of like um, Vaseline or probably not Vaseline because it's petroleum-based, a good lip balm that's not petroleum-based. Um, you want to really be massaging that in with the toothbrush and that will just take off any um, dead skin cells, any like flakiness on the lips. Uh, then you want to get a really amazing lip balm. Um, there's uh, a really good Aussie brand actually called Kiss Ready Lips and that is full of very natural ingredients, so Kiss Ready Lips. Um, natural ingredients and none of the nasties um it's so funny that a lot of lip balms on the market and really popular brands like chapstick and um you know like i can't even remember some of the other brands that because i just don't use them anymore but they actually dehydrate your lips and so they're designed to um have stuff in there that that makes your lips dry and then you put more of it on so you use more of it and then you buy more of it um and this is kind of a bit of one of those marketing things that happens in our industry unfortunately and um and so it, your ingredients more than ever is really important. So mm -hmm. make sure, um, you know, as, as I said, that's an Aussie brand that I like using in my makeup kit, Kiss Ready Lips. Um, there's also another great um, couple of brands that don't have all the nasties in it. Uh, but just keeping your lips, having that moisture onto your lips on a, quite a regular basis. And, in fact, a moisturising lipstick will keep your lips um, also moisturised. Okay, great. That's good to know. Good question. Um, if you've got any other questions, we have uh, finished our makeup tutorial. So please send us any questions you have. So just as a recap for everyone, uh, moisturizer. Yep. Primer. Yep. Cream. Yep. Powder. Set it all, set what's wet, yep. Yep. Is it blush? Blush, yep. Yep. And then highlighter on the top. Eyeliner on top, mm -hmm. and then um, eyeliner. Eyeliner, yep. Mascara, and then yep. and oh, what's that one? Yep, mascara. Yep, yep, and mascara, then, yep. And next time you'll be doing eyeshadow, um, the eyeshadow because that's mm. that's not itself. Um, yes, yes. And yes. we've got we've got a question. Can you purchase Iridis Cosmetics online? Oh, you can actually. So uh, everything that we've used today is online. 
Uh, we also, so it's iridis.com.au, I-R-I-D-I-S.com.au. Uh, and everything is categorised into face, eyes, cheeks, lips, etc. makes it easy to find. Uh, the mm. other thing is you can always come in and see us uh, at Iridis Cosmetics in Yarraville uh, and get your own personalised face chart just like that. Uh, and it also um, is a good opportunity because we can do remote colour matching, you know, a virtual colour matching. We've got instructions for that. And if you're interested in doing that, just shoot through a message to me on Facebook or Instagram and I'll send you the instructions on how to take a good selfie for me to see your colours perfectly. Uh, and uh, But if you did want to come in and see us, uh, we are taking appointments, uh, which is so exciting that we're back and mm. we will be able to create a face chart paint by numbers for you. Amazing. And you were talking about coming back and, um, you know, one of the great things about Couch Community um, is if you didn't know, Couch Community is a production company run by JT Productions and, um, you know, they've, they've started this online, great, a great show, great series to help businesses get back um, during this COVID little mayhem that we're having at the moment. How have you been travelling in COVID-19? Oh. It's been weird, right? Like, you know, for me, we shut down our business pretty um, early on in the process, sort of mid-March, uh, mm. and it, and I we took our kid out of um, daycare and we we just went into lockdown and, and, uh, and, you know, my wife was working from home and it's been really strange listening to her and, you know, like doing all her, um, you know, work. And she talks to herself like way more than I actually knew. That's just been disturbing. Um, and I actually, like I... I quit makeup. Obviously, we couldn't do it from a hygiene perspective and I became a full-time mum and housewife and, yes. like, traumatising. Like, every woman that has done that, bloody hats off to you, is the hardest job working out what to cook for dinner every night, like, on top of the washing and everything else. Seriously, yes. that brain thing, oh, my God. So it's actually been really weird. Um, I mean, what about you? Like, you're also in the same boat not working, you know, with what you do. Yeah, well, you know, like Comedy Festival got cancelled because of COVID and, you know, that was one of the first things that made me realise that this was a bit serious. Well, not yeah. a bit, but it was specifically serious. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, because I have an online presence and I do a lot of work online, I've got a community, I've been able to work and, um, yeah, I've just been able to pivot on that and just keep adapting. I think that's the word is adapting. So, yeah, I agree. You know, we talk about our makeup where this is just an adaption isn't it like yeah exactly you, mm, yeah like your, we would sorry you you go ahead this bloody no, lag. <laughs> no i'm saying that you you are always revolutionizing your products the way you put on makeup it's mm. always a learning process. um yeah so what inspires you to with the growth of your business coming out of covid how are you what are you doing yeah, so we're officially back for our first lot of um, brow and lash appointments on the weekend, in fact. Uh, we I haven't done any makeup yet, but that is definitely coming because a whole bunch of my regulars are like, I just want to come back and support you. Um, and, you know, like even just that whole, um, I mean, they've got nowhere to go, but they still want to come and get their makeup done. Like how good are my clients? Seriously. Uh, mm. The other cute thing is I'm doing a teen makeup workshop on Monday, um, being a public mm. holiday. It was a good opportunity. It's her 16th birthday. It's a surprise for her. That's going to be really cute. So wow. we have to limit, you know, the numbers of people that we're going to have in our in-person workshops. Like previously we could have, you know, 12, 15, um, but now we'll be halving that for the um, square metre rule uh, issue. Uh, but, I mean, as you say, the pivoting, we, we moved a whole bunch of stuff online. I started doing more videos. Um, mm. and our incredibly loyal customers just stocked up on their products. We had a makeup sale and, you know, like just our clients have really gotten behind us during this time. So, you know, we, we did manage to save Iridus. Like at first I was like, this is going to be the end of us. If I can't work for two months, six months, however long we're stuffed. But yeah. um, the bank came through and our clients came through. And I tell you, I, the gratitude is huge. I mean, you know, as I said, I left being a lawyer, a really successful job to run this dream of teaching women to view themselves in a more positive way um, yes. and then to think that, you know, it had sort of ended before we even really soared was going to be the end of me. So, yeah, like 
it's been amazing to be back. Like this is, it's awesome to be back. Yeah, and, and thank you for being back online on this show. It's, it's so, um, uh, what's that word? My brain's not working right now. But it feels great to be back online with you during this time. Hashtag love your reflection, which is this series. Um, thank you so much for joining us on the show. And before we say goodbye, just a plug for next week on Couch Community, Monday the 15th of June at 6 p.m., wellness for your well-being. We have sound meditation with Lily Kim, and you can buy tickets via the JT Productions Management website. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you had to give us one tip, Peter Gay, what would it be for makeup? Ah. Uh you know what keep it simple don't feel like you have to do a million things um you know i mean i think we saw today you know this could be your iso routine um but it could also be your daily routine you know like this doesn't have to be a really difficult thing so although we've got multiple products involved they're really quick and easy to put on so moisturize 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 is the tip for winter um mm -hmm. and then get your glow on keep that glow happening keep the glow happening and check, go to the website at www.iridus.com.au. Is that correct? That is right. Good. Love it. Fantastic. Check us out on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, support small businesses, support Couch Community, who is highlighting and bringing to you small businesses during this time here. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. See you. We can dance it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Join us next.